Stop it there. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Acoustic Paradiso. Mick here. And I am Pete. Uh, so you guessed in the title what we're talking about today. Yes. Kind of. Kind of. What is the title? Because um. <laughs> <laughs> title hasn't been decided yet. Title see. hasn't been decided yet, but something with acoustic guitars into amplifiers. So which amp for your acoustic guitar? Something yeah. like that. Because we have had some questions about amplifiers and about pedals and about distortion, about acoustic guitar. And we had Chris Wood in playing some stuff and he was using an overdrive pedal into a, an AR amp and an acoustic guitar to get sort of a slightly driven sound. And we thought it would be interesting to plug some stuff in. Plug some stuff in, start from the beginning and see where we get to because I'm gonna hazard a guess here that 90% of people, maybe more, who have an electroacoustic guitar do not have an electroacoustic amplifier. They yes. just plug straight into the PA, which of course is the accepted Norm, uh, if you've got an electroacoustic guitar, i.e. one of these things with a, a pickup in it, whether it's an under the saddle pickup, mm. a microphone inside or a, a magnetic sound hole pickup, you come out of here yeah. and plug straight into a mixing desk. With a coily cable because that just sounds better. <laughs> Check these out. <laughs> and why aren't we worried about capacitance with the coily cable here, Pete? Why are we not? Yep. Because it's the same length as... Preamp. Oh, brilliant. Okay, yeah, yes. So it's driving it. It's not such a big, <laughs> it's not such a big deal uh, before anyone comments on that. Yeah, absolutely. So that's the normal thing. And then if you do play an electroacoustic guitar regularly, you'll probably spend about 80% of your time moaning about how bad it sounds. <laughs> Straight into the desk. Yeah. So so working on my, my, my basic maths there, 90% of people are 80% unhappy with their plugged in electroacoustic sound. <laughs> that's pretty, that's a lot, isn't it, really? Yeah, well, that's Ooh, like, what's that, 170%? Yeah. <laughs> Is there such a thing? Is it, you can't go over 100%, can you? I've never, I've never understood that. It's like you can't reverse backwards. More is always more. <laughs> but in this case, we can. So, yeah, slightly flippant. Um, way of introducing us there but the point is how on earth do you do you a what do you plug this into and how do you make it sound okay so yeah we thought just for, for for a laugh because we know people who do it we have an electric guitar amp yeah a common or garden fender hot rod deluxe although not so common or garden this one because it's in a in a special finish but it's a hot yeah. rod deluxe well it's got um G twelve H in it. Okay, so yeah. but yeah. it's anyway, a, it's a hot, a hot deluxe. deluxe. And the new Boss Acoustic Stage uh, Singer Pro, yeah. Acoustic Singer Pro, which is um, although it has a lot of other stuff on it as well, it is an acoustic guitar amplifier. It is. Should we start there? We shall start there. Okay, so actually, I've got to start stop saying so all the time. <laughs> keep, keep getting picked up on it. Yeah, there's so one then, person in particular that picks up on mix. Yeah, so. it's, uh, but everybody it's, it's has a conversational to... prompt. It, has no, it, it doesn't need to be in the language like so much else. And if you can hear random sniffing, that's just Taylor in the background there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's half asleep like going. So there's no, no, so. Di no DIs today. So. No so. Like, so, like. There's no. <laughs> so what are we doing? There are no DIs today. We're miking everything so it's closer to what your ears would hear yes. or what would go out over a PA speaker. No yeah. DIs. So we've got the acoustic guitar amp mic'd and we've got the Hot Rod Deluxe mic'd. Yes. So Pierre, yes, let's, darling. let's see if we can get a usable plugged in electroacoustic sound from out the. Of, um, yeah. What happened there, Mick? 
So um, the Acoustic Singer Pro has got a bunch of um, sort of preset EQ curves on it, if you like, yeah. which, which Boss calls acoustic resonance. And this sort of sound, to me, When I see electroacoustic artists playing, be they famous or not, or at open mic nights, I end up at a lot of open mic nights. Yeah. That's the sound I hear a lot. Yes. Which is that kind of, not very much mid, lots of bass, lots of treble, yeah. sparkly zingy, and it's the thing that a lot of people don't like about undersaddle pickups. Yeah. Incidentally, what's in there? Uh, and this is, I think this is Fender's own thing, isn't it? So it's, it's all undersaddle, yeah? Yes. Yeah, okay, good. I think. I'm pretty sure it is too. Yeah. Um, and then all I did when it sounded fatter, I just turned the uh, acoustic singer pro's acoustic resonance off. So this is just straight in. This is this is. Um. Ah, it's like an image of of, of sort of. Yeah, I, I see what you mean. Yeah. It's fatter and warmer yeah. and yeah, but the, everything that people like in a button. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Now, that's great. So an acoustic amp, we know that you can make it sound a little bit. There's plenty of EQ control mm -hmm. on there, and actually this is a particularly good one. I think that sounds really good. It does. I'm, I think it sounds really it good. It does, and there's enough um, tweakeroo on the front panel there without getting into um, parametric mids and all of that. It's pretty simple to operate, yeah. and you can go, I mean, you can even turn, the, it's, it's got a high frequency tweeter, you go, I'll just give you, a sound, give you an idea of what it sounds like with that turned off. And that'll become really relevant to our discussion in a minute, I think. Um, so that's your standard electro, would you agree? Yeah. What do you, I mean, nice so you, you've toured the world, you've, uh, you've... Yeah, but when you do, when the, the what I've done um, before is literally just plug it into a DI or using a, I've got um, a Layla acoustic switch, which is a little DI box with a DI out and a little sort of preamp sort of thing yep. to warm some stuff up. Um, but there is no amps really. And what are you? What, so what are you relying on there? Uh, in ear sound. So I rely on the in ear monitor guy, so yeah. the monitor guy, to do good sound. And if you feed them uh, and water them and you treat them nicely, then you'll get a good sound out of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I work with some amazing people, and they I think I've always had really, really good sound. I've never had a problem. And it's always nice in, in ears if you are running an in ears. Um, I find the problem is, in, is when it's monitored. It, to yeah. get it to cut through the rest of the mix, yeah. and then you get a lot of feedback. But if it's in ears, it's great. Just put a little bit of reverb on it and make it sound lovely. And then you know, I'm, I'm, I trust. You kind of have to trust front of house yeah. to make it sound good out front. And that can be an issue sometimes. You know, maybe they cut too much bottom end out because they want it to sit in the mix, but then it doesn't feel right with the singer. Oh, anyway. Th there's there's lots of that sort of stuff. That You're in their you, hands, aren't you? And on a big yeah. pro gig like that. You've basically that's the best option because you just have to trust people. Everyone's and, yeah, they all want know it to sound job. good. And they, you know, if if you are, then most most of the, you know most of these people know what they're doing mm. and they know what how to mix <laughs> a, a good mix. So, so know. if you if you take uh, let's say it's a ten thousand seat gig, if you take nine thousand nine hundred and fifty people away yeah. from that audience, shrink the stage down to your local pub or bar <laughs> gig. Yeah, but another thing is that those ten thousand people maybe maybe. 50 of those people will go, oh, I can hear an acoustic guitar in there. <laughs> sack the sound guy, sack, uh, the, sack the monitor player. engineer. You've got no, you, you're, you're down to playing in a to bar. To you in a, in a and bar. There, and and there might be a, a P, there might be a, PA. somebody working the PA. Yeah. Or you'll have one of these. That's the, that's, that you can put yeah. your microphone into as well. Yeah. Because, you know, most of us, most of the time, are plugged into a desk. And as, as I said at the beginning, it's a difficult thing to deal with because either the foldback isn't very good yeah or it's you know the, the the guy on the desk or girl on the desk doesn't have very much time to eq your guitar in or you might have a weird pickup so yeah the whole point of having an amp and we said this many times before is that it just gives you a bit of control back yes absolutely and you can always take the di out on these mm. and give that to the sound engineer and then you know pops your uncle <laughs> roberto <laughs> went to Spain. Here's your console, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> With your Auntie Mabel. <laughs> this so, is funny. Anyway. However, 
it's not to everyone's taste. No. And and let's just make that point again. So here you go. Give us a give us some more strumage, Pete. So if we could do an instant poll now and say, right, everybody out there watching, put your hands up if you love that sound, and probably, I don't know, 20% will put their hands up. Yeah. It, feel totally indifferent about it, another 20%. How, how many don't, don't really like that sound? And I th I'm, I'm guessing that it would be in the majority. Yeah, I think, I think it's a good sound. I'm really happy with that. It's usable, don't get, yeah. me, don't get me wrong. If you're in a band context, yeah. As you, as you well know. Yeah, yeah. It, it, everything is, most stuff in a band content where you have to cut through with amps and stuff. That's why it's a lot of amps that might not sound great when you sit in front of them, mm. they work much better in a big live environment or in just in a pop environment. They cut through better. Yeah. Some guitars do that, some drums, some cymbals, some whatever it is, just cut through that and they sit in it where they need to be sitting. Where some of these are kind of, They've got some of these amps got this design bedroom design sound where you get, you know, a lot of these amps got like super stereo and all this sort of stuff going on. And when you sit in front of me, go, wow, that sounds amazing. And the reverb is lovely and stereo and all that stuff. But that will never really work in the real world. No. Many <laughs> times, uh, it's, it's a really difficult one to kind of. That's why, you know, I, this amp is really great. This is the first time we've really used it. But that's why I prefer the AI amp, because it just, it just has, it just sits in the right, the right place. place. Yeah, but it is, it's a sound that not everybody loves. Absolutely. Because of that high frequency thing. So what we thought we'd do is... But this is the interesting bit, really, about yeah. this, this is what this video is. That let's, let's compare, let's see what happens when you plug into an electric guitar amp and even, goodness knows, add a bit of, Overdrive, overdrive if you as, want to do that. As Chris did, you know, in his video, he used a little bit of overdrive, which was pretty cool. Let's compare, so let's compare the sound of the, of the boss, which is, we're, we're gonna take the boss as red as a kind of standard acoustic guitar yeah. amplifier, because yes, they all sound a bit different, but they're all in the, in the same bracket. Yeah, and they absolutely. all sound vastly different from a normal electric guitar amplifier, as we're about to find yeah. out. So and a lot of them are brown. Yeah, well. Oh, that's brown. Yeah. It's a brown day today. Yeah, the law says this should be black. Yeah. In the way that it says they. Oh, should it should be, be a tweed. Yeah, or tweed. Yeah. So we are completely wrong. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Give, give us some. Give us some stuff. <laughs> Off the bat, as you would say, it sounds very, very different. Yeah. Doesn't it? Much more electric, even though it's not. Uh. So, let's go. So, <laughs> we're going to go back to the boss. I'm going to just show you what the um, EQ controls do the bass, the mid, and the treb. Switched over to the Fender, yeah. uh, and I'll just do the same thing on the bass, middle, and treble controls. Okay, so here we are. get used to it and I actually like it. It's a couple couple interesting Probably things. Then, to, isn't it? Couple interesting things to note. The um the EQ pots themselves are in completely different places. Absolutely. So right at the end I was changing the presence control. Okay. Not the treble control. Yeah. Because the treble control is so much further down the spectrum in the electric guitar amp than yeah. it is in that plus plus. Um I get asked this all the time, why can't I just plug my acoustic guitar into an electric guitar amp? Because it doesn't produce the high frequencies in the way that an acoustic guitar, no. that's got a separate tweeter which we looked at earlier. Yeah. Doesn't mean you can't do it, just means it sounds very different as we've just found out. Yeah. But as you were saying, 
You quite like it? Yeah. I like it too. Yeah. It's it gets a warmer, more mi- warmer mitt sort of. Anyway, it's difficult to explain, but I do I do like it. And once you when you pl- play it, when you were tweaking there, it's it's actually sounds nice and warm. Yeah. But in the room, it's probably I don't know. We'll we'll have to see what what yeah, it sounds see like. What, when see what the microphones are hearing yeah. from the speakers. And there are artists that do it. So you were mentioning a guest you had in earlier. Yeah, Chris recently. Woods. Yeah. He, oh no, he doesn't use. No, no, he, he uses the NAR, but he uses okay. an acoustic. So, but he uses the overdrive stuff. Um, so I'm thinking of John Butler, who's um, acoustic singer songwriter guy. Yeah, yeah, uses yeah. all kinds of stuff. I'm thinking of a guy called Chuck Reagan. I met once who will run a little bit through a deluxe reverb. Yeah, and I've met various. Ben, what's his name? Plays the D28 left-handed. Oh yeah. Ben Howard. Ben Howard. Yeah, same thing. Absolutely. And I think he has one He's, running with a little bit of tremolo. He does he? some. He does some laney stuff with, where he plugs his guitar into that. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So it's a really, it's a, it's quite a cool thing to do. We'll get yeah. onto mixing them in a minute. Yeah. Before we get there, just want to do a little bit on overdrive <laughs> because you think, uh, uh, could you possibly use overdrive with a, with an acoustic guitar? And here's why. Sometimes it's not a good idea. So um, I never understand. Just click works. B or only only B. Only always B. B. Yeah, it's, we've got an A B switch on the floor. Yeah, which is confusing me. Yeah, because <laughs> there's two switches and there's A and B on it. Anyway, <laughs> so okay, <laughs> back into the boss. The boss. See now immediately, I want to tweak the uh, thing here. Of your typical uh, sound. Now let's um got two two pedals here. Got one platanus, which is a mid boost clony type thing, yeah. and the mud honey, which is uh, a grittier, dirtier. Overdrive. Sort of a yeah, can all go fussy, can go like fast tones and distortion, but also like just overdrive with boost and two channels. So let's anyway. say you want to get a bit of a solo boost on for your. Um I'm just going to take a little bit of reverb down. I feel like there's a little bit of reverb, okay? It's the boss. B. Oh, for goodness sake. Confusing again with the A B switch. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Just just once more through okay. the through the boss. Not a very. It's it's a sound. Yeah. And it's a it's a sound that has been used. Yeah. But it's not very nice. It's not it? a very nice sound. No. And no I don't really like it. I must say. And that's all because when you stick the overdrive on, it, there's all this high frequency stuff that just does not exist in this. Yeah. But it does exist in in that. And yeah. I was turning the, the uh, attenuating the tweeter to make it sound a bit more palatable. Yeah. So we should just try that with um with a bit more <laughs> aggressive aggressiveness. <laughs> Thank you. 
almost like some frequencies g- goes missing, so there's some of the yeah. notes you don't even hear. Yeah. In that amp. Yeah. But you hear it in that. I don't know if it's a tube thing or. Obviously, we're using extreme. Settings yeah, we're, do, we're to, going extreme. To hammer, hammer the point home. None of that. None of that is particularly nice. But it just kind of. It, it it's an example of how overdrive and how the electroacoustic guitar just reacts so radically differently into. It's incredible, isn't it? Into into different amps, and then of course you've got the option of mixing them. Yes, which is, now you can press A. Yeah. Okay. Now now I can press A. <laughs> See, I'm thinking to get A, you press A. No. Yeah. No. It's uh, it's yeah. set up in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Whatever. 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 Right. What ifs? What ifs? I've, I've done it wrong again. Um, <laughs> so back to the boss then. <laughs> Let's try, let's try, no, let's let's, try that let's one try here. Different guitar. This is cool because it's got another pickup in it, doesn't it? So this has a blend. This has got a, a, a pizza pickup, which is this. And a mic, which is this. You can kind of hear how that's pretty hollow sounding. Yeah. And then. Th- that's kind of where I like it with maybe yeah. five or ten percent. Just a little bit. Mic in. Just a tiny bit. Mike. Hey, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So same thing. Here it is through the uh, boss. Yeah. Sounds totally different now. Yeah, absolutely. So the phase relationship between the two pickups works much better the other way around into the fender. And I'll just change that EQ a little bit, take off some presence, take off some treble, add in a bit of bass and middle. there we go, and I'll, I'm just going to flick the bright switch off actually. Flick it. <laughs> it's so mad when you hear them next to each other, isn't it? it it's, you get used to one as yep. you're listening. And then you put the other one on, you go, oh, I don't like that. And then, then, it, then you go, oh, no, this is really nice. And then you put the other one on, you go, oh, I don't like that now. I don't mind that. And there will be people screaming at the screen now, I much prefer the sound of the Fender. Yeah. Electric guitar amp. It and sounds really a good. bit more magnetic, doesn't it? So it sounds a bit more real it. in a way, doesn't it? It's a little bit odd because I'm hearing the um, I can hear the yeah. acoustic sound of the string. I was going to mention that earlier that actually um, we're hearing the acoustic sound coming out because yeah. it's not very loud in the room. Um, but I like that. It's pretty Nothing cool. Nothing wrong with that at all. And then of course you can you can blend both amps. So Really 
really nice. Really in the room, doesn't it? I'm just going to take some treble off that because it's quite present. Roll that T off. <laughs> And That's this, really nice. This starts to remind me of a guy um, out of Austin, Texas called Monty Montgomery. You heard of him? Yes. And he does that kind of, he plays an acoustic guitar really loud on the edge of feedback all the time. So he's got drive going, probably not as much as this, but. That's really nice. It's, it's not a very, oh, interesting. It's not a very nice sound in isolation, but in a band, I think that extra cut I, and the sizzle. I don't mind it at all. Funny you say it's not very nice, and I really maybe you're sitting a little bit different. No, I, I guess I should qualify that. What I mean is, in the context of an acoustic guitar sound, it's not a very nice. No, sound. It, it's not something you would do. Be a singer songwriter at, yeah. at a at an open mic night somewhere with because it just might not work. But if you were if you are that sort of the guy who, who, who does all the stuff, you know, like Chris did, and you sort of, he, he knows how to do all that sort of stuff and yeah. and really sort of things that I never never can get, you know. So those those acoustic yeah. capable, really good players, they got all the stuff and toying with the effects and toying with delays and compressors and wah pedals and, you know, even trumpet players use wah pedals sometimes, I've seen. It was invented for the trumpet. That's it. I didn't know that. Yeah, I thought it was um, Clyde McCoy was a trumpet player. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, still, and I suppose that's the point, isn't it? Here we're talking about right at the outset. I've got an electroacoustic guitar. How do I amplify it? Well, you can use one of those. Yeah. You can use one of these. Absolutely. And if you want to get really interested in it and immersed in it, why not use both and add a couple of pedals? I th I think this the, the whole thing is that if you blend these two amps, it's I think that sounds great. It's definitely the best sound, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you can go to the hassle of having two amps. Having two amps. But two you know, amps. we don't. You don't need to. You know, if you you can buy a smaller amp than that, you can buy a little uh, Blues Junior or whatever, and have. Yeah. It's great. And then, of course, you could, if you wanted, you could just you could have an AB box and only run the overdrive into the electric guitar amp or something. Absolutely. Along those lines, the the. It's endless. The possibilities are <laughs> endless, aren't they? Limitless. Yeah. That's great. I what really do you, what do you that. think? What do you what do you have, no, but have it, you done it's this a, before? A different, I've I've done it a few times where I kind of didn't have anything else. Yeah. Or when I was at a gig in, in a garden party and there was just an acoustic guitar and uh, there was a drummer that was really loud and I just plugged it into the electric amp and just got on with it. And it was fine. But it was kind of you know it's a sound you know and it was there was just fun and um, yeah. never blended two of them together before. This is my first. Uh, experience with blending uh, electric and acoustic amps and actually playing with with an acoustic guitar into it yeah that's no, cool I think once you get your head around the fact that the EQs are in completely different places absolutely and it, if you look at the EQ on top of the Hot Rod Deluxe now it looks kind of it looks borderline comedy because <laughs> you've got the bass pretty much full up the middle all the way round um, very little treble quite a lot of pre it's just you know would sound bonkers for a, for a, um for an electric guitar yeah but if you can get your head around that with you know some people are a bit ocd with all the knobs have to be in sort of symmetrical yeah. <laughs> <laughs> symmetrical places that's not what it's about people you take then you set it and then you take the knob, knobs off put them back down and then screw them in oh, so they all to great idea what a fantastic idea have you never thought about that before? So get your amp set exactly so how you like exactly. it, and screw the knobs, no, and then I've screw them all. And screw them all, all to, to 12 o'clock, <laughs> because then you just set everything to 12 o'clock, <laughs> and you know exactly what, how it needs to sound. You just set everything to 12 o'clock. The problem is, then you take it out on another gig and put it up somewhere, and then you go, oh, I need a little bit more trouble on this one. And then you go, oh no, where's my little screwdriver? <laughs> and you can't handle Brain it. Brain exploded. Yeah. But 
Interesting. Yeah, interesting. I mean, yes, you could hear that we were on the edges of feedback issues there. Not too much of it, I don't think. And it, that depends entirely on where you're stood, yeah. how close to the amp yeah. you are, what's happening, what else is happening in the room, and various devices have stuff in them to help you through that. Anti-feedback and face yeah. switches and all yeah. that different stuff. Yeah, face switch can be your biggest friend in those. Absolutely. Oh, well, that was interesting. Think so? What do you think? Do you think this was interesting? Should we do more of it? So just experimental things. What can you do with an acoustic guitar? Mm. Can you row? Like <laughs> we'll go and rent a canoe somewhere and then see, and then play it before and after and see if uh, if, <laughs> if it sounds better or worse. Yeah. You know, there is a little river down here. Uh, only so Brazilian could, rosewood. Yes. Yeah. For that. Pre sixty nine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If, if best. Anyway, that was. I really. That was really interesting to me. Yep. I thought that was interesting, but at okay. least at least I got something out of it. If you didn't, but you know, <laughs> uh, yeah. How can I amplify my acoustic guitar? Well, there's there there are three ways. One of those, one of those, or both together. Yeah, That's or you can just put it straight into the PA, but then you are at the mercy of people up there or over there, like that side could be that side. Anyway, acoustic paradiso. I'm Pete. I'm Mick. See you soon. Cheerio. Bye. Don't forget to subscribe. Mm-hmm.